Hey everybody, it's Jersey Frank. Welcome back. Um, in this particular lesson, we're going to talk about creating guitar solos and some tips and tricks in here for how to do that uh, maybe a little bit differently than you have been. And uh, let me first of all explain this glove. People have been asking me, what's with the glove? Well, I sweat a lot and the sweat is very acidic and it will wreck my strings literally in a gig or two. And I play out weekly and uh, I was wrecking strings for years and having to pay, you know, 10 bucks a set, uh, replacing them constantly. And with this glove, I can go a couple of months without changing the strings because sooner or later the, you know, they'll oxidize and just in the air and the humidity here in Florida. But they last a lot longer. So that's the deal with the glove. You can get them on eBay. They're called the Guitar Glove. Now I'm doing a plug for these guys. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive and they're thin. You can see they begin to fray uh, sooner or later. And, you know, they'll last. This might last me a month. And you can buy them in packs of three or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> unintentional plug for the company, but good for them. I want to talk, uh, if you haven't watched the first two videos, I recommend that you do that. And that way you can catch up. Um, and then this will make a lot more sense to you as we go on. We've been talking a lot about the major scale. Today I want to talk about another scale called the pentatonic scale. Penta just means five. It's a Greek term. means five. Tonic is the root or first note of a scale. So it's a five-note scale and extremely popular in all genres of Western music and, and world music as well. Um... If you're a guitar player, you basically can't do without this scale. Uh, it's almost exclusively used in rock and blues, even country. Um, and I want to talk about how this scale is built and uh, how to use it today. I'm going to add it to our major scale. So now we'll have those two scales in the bag. And with those two scales in the bag, there's almost nothing you can't do in terms of soloing. It just depends on how creative you, you're able to get with it. The, we're going to talk about specifically the minor pentatonic scale today. And if you remember back to our first lesson, minor simply means you're taking the major scale and you're lowering the third note, the third step of that major scale down a half step. So if we're in the key of A, we're playing the A major scale, we get to the third degree of C sharp. We're going to lower it. We're going to flat it. And that's going to give us instead of Okay. So, if we're in the key of A and we're looking at the A major scale that column to A we take the sixth degree, sixth degree of any major scale and we use that as the root note of our minor pentatonic scale okay so it doesn't matter what key you're in if you're in f count up six in the, the sixth note of the major scale count up to that note one two three four five six that's d in the key of f and we will play our minor pentatonic scale from the d note if we're in the key of a count up to the sixth note sixth degree one two three four five six that gives us f sharp we would play our minor pentatonic scale from the f sharp now that means that whatever key we're in if we're in the key of a we can use that minor pentatonic scale starting from its sixth degree over any chord progression in the a, in an, any a major chord progression so if we're playing a typical 1-4-5, meaning one chord of the A major key, four chord, five chord, back to one. That's been used a billion times in rock music. One chord, four chord, five chord, one chord. Okay, that's a... You know, and you can play that pattern in a million different ways. It doesn't have to be that kind of rockabilly sound. Um, you would be shocked how many of your favorite popular tunes, even modern tunes, are using that uh, progression. Even if they're not playing straight chords, they may be playing 
riffs or melodies built around those four chords. Uh, so the singer can sing over the top of them, right? You may even go back to like Elvis. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right for you. That's all right, mama. Sit and sit. One, four, five, just those three chords, okay? Um, you can take, if you're playing that in A, or any chord progression in the key of A major, you can take that minor pentatonic scale built off its sixth degree and use that to solo over that progression. Now, there are a lot of players that do that exclusively. That's all they do. It may be all they know how to do, or it may be their favorite way to do it, and there are people that can come up with some amazing guitar solos and melodies simply using that one scale over chord progressions. They never even change the scale as the chords go by. They're just so adept, so creative at building solos using that one scale. Now you can take that scale, of course, and you can play it here, or you can move it, you know, you can move it around the neck. You can play it like we looked at in lesson two. In the second video, we talked about taking the major scale and playing the same seven notes, but starting it from the different degrees of the scale. So you play A major scale from A to A. You'd play it from B to B. You'd play it from C sharp to C sharp. And you that gives you seven different ways to play that one major scale. You can do the same thing with the five note pentatonic scale. You can play it, let's say we're using the A, I'm gonna show you how to play the pentatonic scale in a minute. You probably already know it. But we can take that same five note pentatonic scale and we can play it from its first degree to its octave, from A to A, one, two, three, four, five, back home to A. We can also play it from its second degree right, which is C, up to C again. We can start it from its third degree and play it up to its third degree higher. So that gives us five ways to play that one scale and that'll help us, enable us to move that one scale all around the fingerboard. So let's learn the minor pentatonic scale, okay? We'll do it in A. If, well, let's do it this way. If we're playing in the key of A, we count up to the sixth degree. And remember, I'm intentionally, sickeningly repetitive, nauseatingly repetitive in these videos so that there's no way you can walk away saying, I don't get it. Even if you're mad at me, if you're getting mad at me going, all right, dude, how many times are you going to say that? That's what I want to happen. Okay, and hopefully you'll thank me later for that if you don't know this material. If you know this stuff already, you probably turned this off by now. Okay, so in the key of A, counting up to its sixth degree, one, two, three, four, five, six, gives us the note F sharp. So we would go to our F sharp note. We're going to do it here. We could do it up here. We could do it anywhere, starting from any F sharp on the guitar. We're going to do it here. And we're going to play a five note pattern, a five note scale that contain the notes of the A major scale just built off the F sharp note. And we're gonna use only five notes. That's why it's a pentatonic scale. Five notes out of that A major scale. So they are F sharp, A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp. Now if we repeat that again higher, we get this. Now I'm going up to the A here. Technically we would stop at this F sharp to make it a two octave, you know, from F sharp to F sharp. A F sharp minor chord, which is the sixth chord in our A major scale. see already where that bluesy feel is coming in 
uh, based off of this scale, right? This is all the... <laughs> Right? So, again, you see what can come out of just that scale. You can solo uh, on that scale all day long. And especially if you're moving it around, there are extensions to it. Right? So, again, being repetitive. You're playing in the key of A major. You're taking its sixth degree, which is F sharp, and you're building a scale off that degree, still using the notes of the A major scale, just giving you a really cool kind of five note scale that has become the dominant way to play rock, blues, even jazz guys use it by adding notes to it, um, using notes that are not even in it in the scale, which we'll talk about later on or in a future lesson. So having said that, what I want to do today is let's create a solo together using the key of A, using a three note chord, a three chord progression in the key of A, using the A major scale and the minor pentatonic scale uh, built from the sixth degree of this A major the key of A major. We'll use so that we'll use the A minor, the A major scale, and the F sharp minor pentatonic scale to solo over this progression in A. I hope that makes sense. Um, when you're writing solos, here are a couple tips I want to give you. Phrasing is the key, right? I don't know. Let me think of a phrasing meaning the rhythm of the notes, the note choices, and how you how you use them to create a melody. For example, a Gilligan's Island show. This is a tale of our cats, two ways we're here for a long, long time. Somebody had to write that, right? On a piano or a guitar or whatever instrument. Um, those are notes taken from the key that the song is written in. And more than likely, notes right out of the chords that are underneath uh, that melody. So, you know, there are a lot of guys that just blaze fast and, you know, a lot of jazz improvising. You know, you can get away with a lot, even playing notes that are not in the key because they're going by so quick. And great phrasing in jazz, right? You know, amazing. If you want to write a guitar solo like, um, you know, the, say, take a listen to a real simple, beautiful solo, Paul McCartney's song, My Love. My love does it good. You listen to that song, listen to the solo in there. It's right out of the pentatonic scale, right? And just beautiful, great, slow, breathing note choices. So it depends on what kind of solo you're writing. Think of Neil Sean from Journey and his solo in, say, Stone in Love or Don't Stop Believing. Those, once you understand this, and you learn those solos, you'll start, there are aha moments where you're like, ah, I see what they're doing. And almost exclusively, like I said before, Neil Sean, um, you know, is using this pentatonic scale. Just depending whatever key the song is in. And he's moving that one scale around the, the fingerboard, starting it from different notes that are contained in that scale. That's how you solo. And... As the chords go by, like we learned in the other lessons, as the chords go by in the songs, you target the root, third, fifth notes of those chords as they go by. And that's how you get familiar sounding solos. They're sort of home based solos because they're the notes contained in the chord. Now you can use other notes. You can use any notes contained in the scale and emphasize those. Okay, um, let's see. Also, silence is golden, right? Leave room. Let the solo breathe. Hang out on a note for a while. Stop playing. Let it rest for, you know, a couple of beats and then come back in. Uh, use silence. Don't all, You don't always have to be filling up the space with notes. You can let it breathe like when we're talking and we pause. 
right? I'm talking so fast in this, it's like, ah, be quiet. You know, it can be annoying. I'm annoying myself. But same thing with music, let it breathe. You know, I'm not a big fan. I respect people who can blaze, you know? You know, I respect that. Um, that's not kind of not, that's not what I really do anymore. When I was a kid, I did a lot more of that. I respect all that. People that can burn arpeggios up and down the fingerboard. and But after a song or two, for me personally, it's like, okay, enough. You know, I'd rather listen to somebody play clarinet, you know, and play beautiful solos all night long that I can hum or sing, you know, that might move me emotionally. Um, and, you know, they can get fast once in a while. Um, and then when they do get fast, it's more impressive. It's like, ooh, what was that? Uh, and for me, the number one rule in writing solos, I have, a, I have an album out uh, by a band called, we call ourselves Now Playing. We put out, it's like a progressive rock album, kind of heavy. Um, you can find it on YouTube. You can go to the website nowplaying.rocks and check out the music there. I play the bass on the album. I played guitar on the album. And I wrote the songs. And um, I'm working on a country album right now, more of an EP with five songs on it. But for me, melody is king. I want you to be able to sing my solos. I want you to drive around in your car with my solos in your head like you would sing the, uh, a melody to a song. And for me, a guitar solo in a song should be a continuation of the song itself. And you should, uh, when the singer stops singing, you should be able to sing my solo. Um, that's why I love Rush so much. A huge Rush fan. Alex Lifeson's playing is singable. Uh, breathtaking, man. What he does with a pentatonic scale. And again, Alex uses mostly these this five-note scale. In every Rush song ever created, he's, by and large, playing around that scale in whatever the key is. So this is huge, this, this particular lesson. Now, one more thing before we get into actually creating a solo. Passing tones. These are the in-between notes that are not in the scale, that are not in the key, but they're the notes between the notes that are in the scale. Let's use the pentatonic scale to take a look at those. Let's play it in F sharp. We did not play these two notes. When we go here, we did not play this note. When we go here, we did not play that note. But we can add them in. The key is not to hang out on them. The key is to move, use them to move to the notes that are in the scale. That's why we call them passing tones, right? So if I'm playing, if we're playing... I didn't use any passing tones, but let me use some now and hear the flavor, the color of this. See? We're getting a little bluesy, a little jazzy there. So it's the way that you phrase them, the way that you use it. Before we create the solo, here's another tip or trick that someone told me years ago and uh, it's been an amazing uh, an amazing tool for me in my bag. Um, and it is this. You can do this when you're improvising on the fly or you can do it when you're writing a solo. Think of a melody from your favorite song. It could be a TV theme song. It could be anything. Think of a piece of classical music, right? Uh, ba -na -na -na, Beethoven's Fifth. Don't steal the notes but steal the phrasing, steal the rhythm of it and use different notes. For example, we're playing this and I'll use ba -na -na -na, right? Just that simple phrasing. <laughs> Maybe I use that to start my solo. Slow it down. Right? So that gives you a ton of ideas. It, it, the ideas are endless at that point. Uh, use the beat on these are just coming to my mind. Eight days a week. I'm using the rhythm, not the notes. Eight days a week. 
doesn't sound anything like the melody, but it gives me phrasing, right? Right? So I might, if I'm writing a solo, I've got a lot of time. So I can think through that over and over again. Now, one more thing. As we're writing the solo, you're going to see this take place. As we're approaching, we're moving from one chord to the next chord. We want to think about how to get to that next chord and what the target note is going to be as we land on that next chord. So if I'm playing in the key of A and playing A, now I'm moving to say B minor. As I'm getting from A and I'm soloing and I'm writing my melodies and I'm thinking through, what can I play while I'm on that A chord? So once I get that lick down and I think, okay, I'm happy with that lick over the A, now we're going to B minor. I want to move that A lick into that B minor lick. I'm still playing the A major scale. I'm never changing. Do I want to just go to a B note and create a phrase off that? Do I want to go to the third of the B minor, the D note, and create a phrase off of that? Do I want to go to its fifth, right? The fifth of B, F sharp. Do I want to start on that note? Do I want to use all three of those notes in my lick? These are things to be just trying and experimenting with and thinking. Do I want to use passing tones to get, for example, if I'm going to go from the A major chord and we're moving to this B minor chord, maybe I go to the B note, but I use this B flat note, which is not in the key, to jump to the B note. So I might start it like this. That note sounds fine if it's not, even though it's not in the key because I'm emphasizing the B. Now, what if I just played the B flat? Check this out. Terrible. See? So the out notes can be in if we know how to work them. All right, so I'm gonna, I've got a little loop pedal here and it's gonna play this simple progression in the key of A major. A major, right? To B minor, to E7, home to A. I play it in six, I think, in, the, in, in more like a waltz feel, like a uh, six four rather than 4-4, four, four. but, and we're just going to mess around with possible melodies, okay? I'm just going to improvise here. We're going to kind of create on the fly. So let's do that. Here we go. Much slower than what I just played. This is A, right? B minor. Starting on A. Turn around, here we go. Going to the B. E. Oh, my bad. Let's say we want to write a phrase here. We're on that A chord. We could, if we're writing a solo, we've got all the time in the world. So maybe I want to, I want to think about what I want to play over that first chord. Okay, so maybe I sing it in my head first, right? Gave me another idea. So maybe I like that right there. These are just notes right out of the A uh, major pentatonic scale, right? Maybe instead of going, that's an E note, maybe I'll choose a higher E. 
I quit. Maybe I play the octave of the E. So I'm just playing, but I'm playing the higher note, it's octave. Let's hear how that sounds over the A, that's kind of cool. Now we're going to the B note. You get the point, right? We can now, if we go to the B minor chord, I don't change scales. I'm staying in this A minor, A major pentatonic scale, but I'm gonna now emphasize the B note. But let's not do that. Let's emphasize it's fifth, right? We're going to B minor, so F sharp. So we're gonna go find our F sharps. Now that's close by the lick we played over A, right? So when we switch to the B, I'm going to continue playing the A major scale, but I'm going to emphasize that F sharp note, okay? I've got to keep bending over for this here. Okay, here we go. Maybe I'm silent. Just a little lick like that. interesting when we go to the D chord it's a D seventh I chose to play which simply means that I'm not rather than playing a simple D major chord I'm emphasizing the flatted seventh note in there well that's for another lesson but for now let me just tell you that I'm playing a uh, I'm sorry a E7 chord and I'm the seventh is the D note, right? So I'm gonna emphasize that D over that E chord, okay? So here we go. This is the A. Now we're going to the B. Now we're gonna go to this E seventh chord. scale over the whole thing never changing playing the B note because we went to the B chord going to the D uh, to the E back home In that progression, we play A to B minor, right? To E7, back to A. When we go back to A, we turn around on the C7. And we start the progression over again. So we're building tension there on that turnaround. So we actually go A, B minor, E7, A, E7, back to A. So we're creating like a build up there. Now you see what I did? I stayed in this scale the whole time. This F sharp minor pentatonic. And as the chords went by, I emphasized the root note of those chords in the scale as they went by. And you can do the same thing. You can do the root, you can do the third, you can do the fifth, staying right in this five note scale. If the chord you're playing over is not in the scale right here, the note is not found in that scale. For example, let's say we went to, let's say we went to, um, trying to find the note that isn't in it. C sharp? There's no C sharp in that scale. But C sharp is in A major. It's in that key. It's the third. There is a C 
sharp in the scale. My fault. My bad. There, there's only five notes from the A major scale in this pentatonic. So there are notes that are missing. And we just have to figure out what those are, right? So the A is there. The B is there. Right there. The C sharp is there. The D is not there. Okay, so the D is the fourth of A major. That's not in this five note pentatonic scale, but check it out. It's right there. So if the D, if we had a D chord in this progression, I would nail the D. Now I'll put that D in, watch this, even though, watch this, it's not in the progression. It'll still sound great because it's in the key and your ear doesn't mind it. Watch. Here it is. That's not in it either. That's A flat. Home at the A. Okay, so you get the point. Let's recap here. We've got the A major scale with seven notes. We count up to the sixth degree, the sixth note of the A major scale in any key. And we build our minor pentatonic scale, our five note minor pentatonic scale off of that note. If we're in the key of F, we count up one, two, three, four, five, six, D. We find our D note on the sixth string and we play our D minor pentatonic scale over our F chord progression. Same thing, B. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, what do we got here? A flat. So we find our A flat and we play our over any chord progression in B. Okay, that's the way it works. We add that to our bag of tricks and now we've got, if we're in A, we've got our A major scale. And we've got our F sharp minor pentatonic. Use patterns also to solo. For example, let's take this pentatonic scale. Maybe I play. Or make up patterns. Skip strings. Right? Leave space. Play notes together. Double stops. Bend notes. When you're bending, you're bending two note from one note to another note in the scale. Here I'm taking the E note and I'm bending it up to the F sharp. Here's the E. Here's the F sharp in the scale. Right? Play these double stops. You can even bend those. You're just bending two notes instead of one. You're playing notes that are not in the scale. Okay? We'll talk about that in another lesson. I want to do just a short lesson on this minor pentatonic scale, but adding notes into it that make it sound cooler. Let me give you an example of it. So we've 
you've got a lot of color notes. Did they get close enough there? All right, well, that'll do it for this lesson. I hope this helped you tremendously. Want to also plug my book again? <laughs> uh, that's like 15 bucks on Amazon. 10 bucks if you get it on Kindle, the electronic version. Thoughts from a guitar player. Got all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, everything we've talked about in these three videos and a lot more in terms of theory. You'll have it in written form if you like. I go into more detail. I talk about how I recorded my album, literally from start to finish, how I wrote the songs. I, I, I step it out, step one, step two, how I recorded it, what software I used, how I wrote the solos, how we laid down the drum tracks and how I wrote the bass lines. I talk about performing live. I talk about idiots in the audience and what to do. <laughs> um, I talk about uh, my favorite players and why they're my favorite players and how amazing they are at doing a particular thing. I talk about the instruments they use. I talk about all different kinds of guitars, what the differences are between them. I talk about strings. I talk about picks. I talk about music stores and why I hate them and why I love them. I talk about buying guitars over the internet and the pitfalls and the benefits. Uh, there are guitar jokes in here, um, on and on and on. Um, and it's not a long book. Just got a lot of good stuff in there, I think, concentrated down. So if you're interested, Thoughts from a Guitar Player, you get it on Amazon.com. I put the link in the description down below. Also the link to the Now Playing website, which is the, uh, the band I put the album together with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.